Are you a risk taker? Stay with me. Do you feel like a dog or like a wolf? And what do you prefer? Today, Skin in the Game by Nassim Nicholas Taleb and so many interesting questions. For example, is the Pope atheist? How to legally own another person? Are you the intellectual yet idiot? Who is Nassim Nicholas Taleb? Nassim Taleb is smart and provocative, philosophical essayist, scholar, statistician, former trader and risk specialist. Nassim Taleb spent his life focusing on problems with probability. And if you want more, voila, you are able to read his book. Skin in the game. To be at risk financially because you have invested in something that you want to happen. But sometimes skin in the game means skin game. Informal, a cheating, swindling trick, a dishonest or unscrupulous business operation scheme. The Ten Commandments The curse of modernity is that we are increasingly populated by a class of people who are better at explaining than understanding, or better at explaining than doing. Know which kind of risk you are dealing with and avoid the risk of ruin. Nassim highlights the difference between regular risk and risk of ruin. Ruin is something you cannot recover from, so should be treated differently. The rational is what survives in the real world. Rapid trial and error can lead to discoveries much like evolution. Again, Trial and error against a real environment is the most effective way to learn. Only evolution knows if the wrong thing is really wrong, provided there is skin in the game to allow for a selection. Real preferences and opinions are revealed by actions that carry skin in the game. Further, people sometimes don't really know what they think or what they want. Real preferences and opinions are revealed via actions that carry skin in the game. The size of a human group makes the dynamics fundamentally different. Taleb introduces the concept of the minority rule. This is where a small, stubborn minority is responsible for changes that propagate across an entire population. For example, the individual family member insists on vegetarian food. The rest of the family doesn't care either way, so declares themselves vegetarian. At the event, the non-vegetarian families don't care either way, so the whole event becomes vegetarian out of convenience. The minority rule explains the spread of moral values religion, languages, and scientific and economic progress. The world is changed by a small group of obsessive people. The minority rule is also responsible for scientific and economic progress. Consider that it only takes one person to discover a new medicine or technology that propagates through the entire population to become the status quo. Over-reliance on employability can take away your freedom. Nassim then discusses the nature of employment and compares it to slavery. He considers most employees to have significant downside risk and those fear of losing their jobs, which allows their employers to control them. Not caring about appearances, Silence, authenticity and freedom which can engender trust. Taleb contrasts this to the behavior of figures such as Putin and Trump who project a visible I don't care attitude. This actually brings them more followers and support because it signals they are authentic and free. With them people know that 
What they'll vote for is what they'll get. Icy scorn glitters in the eyes, contemptuous and cruel. Conversely, if a politician is too polished, without any visible vulnerabilities, people can sense they are not truly free. They must answer to others and so cannot be trusted to do what they say they will. Systems and ideas increase their life expectancy as they age. Nassim also studies the stability of systems. He considered that systems which operate by skin the game are self-stabilizing by eliminating the parts they don't work. Whereas systems which lack this essential skin in the game component destabilize and lead to very bad black swan events. For example, the financial crisis was a, was a result of bankers not having skin in the game, since they knew they wouldn't have to personally suffer the negative consequences of their bad decision. They drove the system to a point of instability, which led to terrible consequences for everyone else. But even now, these bankers are still operating the financial system. Systems operated by those without skin in the game are more prone to black swan events as operators are rewarded for short-term perception rather than long-term results. Systems operated by those without skin in the game often have a larger tail risk, where there's a higher chance of an extremely bad event happening. This risk can go undetected for a long time, so if the system operator is rewarded for the short-term perception of their peers and managers, like in large bureaucratic organizations, rather than their actually long-term results, then they are not incentivized to reduce this tail risk. They can get their credit and move on to the next large organization before the black swan event happens. So, what would you rather be, a duck or a wolf? Freedom is never free. When the wolf decided not to live like a domesticated dog, he decided that self-ownership was more important than the perception of being free. The wolf has to work hard and hunt for his food. The food may not always be as delicious as the dog's, but it will still taste better because the things we cherish most are the things we've worked hardest to get. The bottom line is this. The wolf has his freedom, the dog doesn't, and freedom is never free. Self-ownership, being truly free to say and do what you want without being afraid. You learn most effectively when you are in contact with reality and have to bear the full consequences of being wrong when you are exposed to risk. Conversely, the most ineffective way to learn is abstract reasoning devoid of a real environment and where there are no bad consequences of being wrong. So, what would you rather be? In my case, I try to transform from dog to a wolf. Oh!